Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Phoenix Point, specifically the year one edition that's just released on Steam. Um, it's an all-inclusive sort of Game of the Year style thing where it's got the DLCs that have come out over time. Some of them are sort of more cosmetic-y sort of DLCs and then most of them are actually, I think there's two of them that are uh, more like uh, story-based sort of expansions. Um, Phoenix Point's a game that I quite like. We've covered quite a few times on the channel, you know, as the DLCs come out. So, you know, there's a new version. Let's have another look. Um, it's a very close cousin to the modern XCOM games. Uh, in fact, a lot of the minds behind the original XCOM from way back in the day, we're thinking like, you know, 90s, um, are, are the brainchilds behind this. So where if you want to think of it as splitting at a crossroads, this has uh, got more of the original team, whereas XCOM uh, came first, at least the modern XCOM and XCOM 2 came first and came up with some newer ideas like the top-down isometric sort of view. Um, so this actually retains a bit more of the sort of horror aspect of the original game, uh, much more mysterious, um, even though it's not strictly an XCOM game. This is about a Pandora virus that... Um, that sort of comes from the ocean in a way. I think the melted ice caps reveal it. And uh, it's got a pretty cool history. You, you know, you're liking the second wave of the Pandora virus and it has this sort of um, Lovecraftian sort of effect on people's minds, sort of possessing them and taking them over and driving them mad. And it made a whole bunch of people walk into the ocean who disappeared. And then they come back as uh, bloody like crab men with mutated parts and all that sort of stuff, basically. So it's pretty cool. Um, I like it. Um, a lot in common with XCOM. If you're already a fan of XCOM, check it out because, like I said, there's more in common with it than there isn't. Um, I guess we'll just do a new game, right? So there you go. There's all the DLC. Um, Festering Squ Skies is still yet to come. I'm not going to do the prologue because I've done that before and we'll just go in on veteran. Yeah, Living Weapons, weapons Blood and Titanium and Legacy of the Ancients. Interesting that it has it highlighted as new. Um, it seems to be a slightly different build, at least a different splash screen or whatever, so an updated one compared to the, the Epic Store version is what I was running. So, yeah, I'm running on the Steam one. We'll see how we go. I'd be curious how the loading times go and all that. I'm still, I am just running it on a, a normal hard drive, not an SSD, but at least with my experience with the previous versions of this game, I would strongly recommend if you have an SSD available, chuck it on. There is a lot of loading in and out of missions, and it and it's usually quite time consuming. The Phoenix Project was founded on October twenty fourth, nineteen forty five. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Mm. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries. Even the heavens were not off limits. Cool. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN. Stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going These on. These subtitles need to calm when down. Those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien. We should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose. New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. Oh, I get it, because of Phoenix. Oh, well, there you go. That's probably as good a setup as you're going to get, better than I was going to be able to do. Anyway, so we start with this overworld map. It's pretty cool. And you got this one bloody space car, little airplane thing. 
and that's your base there, all right? Uh, it used to be that you could initiate these world scans yourself, but not so much now. I believe they just happen automatically, like if I were to unpause. Percentage has gone out. It doesn't seem to be scanning, though. Oh, yeah, it is. You can see the little green. There we go. Very good. All right, so we want to queue up research. You want this always in the uh, its chamber at all times. We're doing doing an atmospheric analysis. I kind of liked it with this weird um, united, as it said, thinking beyond cities and, uh, and territories, sort of, um, I guess, an, a joint ideal. Uh, I mean, I guess you get into dangerous territory of like fanaticism and religions and all that sort of stuff. But this idea of like a scientific community that um that really strives to the betterment of mankind it's cool you know it's very star trekian um co so here we go we're gonna try and monitor the mist with uh remaining weather sites uh satellites sorry okay very good so we're gonna do that we'll check out our personnel we should start with a couple of chads here one two three four five um and how many seats do we have in the manacle we have six so we could hypothetically get one more person we don't have the ability to recruit yet that's a research. You go to your base and you start, there's some bedrock in some areas, so you are limited. And we start out with pretty much a, a very good suite of everything we need. Now, they did uh, change some things around. There was a food processing plant, but I think they took that out. Yeah, which was interesting because um, cause you're running at a loss for food. That's sort of like your tax on people. Um, Otherwise, we've got mostly everything, I think. What do we not have? Living quarters. We have we should have one of them. We might not have a training thing. Store. Oh, that's just for storage. Don't worry about that. Access live. The uh, fabrication plant. Now, as far as the fabrication plant and, um, and like, research labs and that, all they do is... Uh, reduce the, the total time to manufacture and research certain things. So they're just like a, a multiplier each time you build a new one. Doesn't give you any extra slots or anything like that. It's just a sort of straight reduction. We Do we have a medical bay? We do have a medical bay, but we don't have a training facility. I think the training facility could be quite handy. <gasps> have It's one of those things, if we had extra dudes sitting in the base, they gain XP. And while we don't have extra dudes yet, it's still going to take, oh, three days to build. That's not very long, actually. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you sort of want to have preemptively. And then we go over to manufacturing and see what we can make. Oh, wow. What is this? Phoenix automatic cannon? What is that? Have they changed the, the auto cannon? They've reskinned it. Huh. Makes me a bit sad. I was used to the old one. Okay, and then we've got all the different armor sets you start with, which, well, it's pretty much three armor, light, heavy, medium. And um, we can get another Manticore up and running, which is good, so we can have lots of different dudes flying around. You can see we've got a ceiling on the amount of uh, airplanes we're allowed to have. Same as the, the car. The car's really good. It takes up four people slots, so if you deploy it, you can only have two other people. So it actually really does hobble your personnel on the ground, but it has, like artillery for and only a limited couple of shots but enough to really fucking make the enemy think twice about messing with you okay cool so that sort of covers the, the uh the basics we could construct more things sure manufacturing i'm not that worried you start out with a whole bunch of med kits ammunition and all that this is unlike uh xcom ammo is an actual resource that you have to look after is it more busy work well i mean time will tell you know i guess it'll depend it's just different I think different is fi a fine way to look at it. Here we go. The Dream is Awakened, Support Galt, run by New Jericho. So this is the first of the factions that we're going to meet. I've played this that many times that I sort of remember. Essentially, these guys are the sort of hyperhumanists. Probably the closest to what I would say is a sort of just a normal person. Um, and essentially, I guess they've, they've lent more into the military might and the uh, fuck the Pandora virus, let's kill them all. You know, I guess Starship Troopers-esque. <laughs> Try and make humanity must survive at all costs and we'll kill their enemy. The other ones are a little bit more like, how do we integrate with the bloody virus, which, yuck, you don't want that. 
Anyway, so they're having a whole bunch of dudes and they're starting to have these dreams because this virus seems to get inside your brain. And uh, we're getting sent in to help them out to kill these rogue soldiers that are rampaging about and causing trouble. All right, so what are you saying here? Empty ready item slot. Okay. We can fix that. So there's your armor and here's your ready items. Um, so it probably makes sense... I mean, he's a sniper, right? We'll give him a med kit in that ready slot. And what we'll do is we'll give him an extra ammo as well. All right. Or well, Emily, sorry. Didn't mean to call you a he, Emily. All right. Already got a grenade in that ready slot. And we'll give you the machine gun. It's interesting. It's almost, I'd like to give pistols to my main dudes if I can help it. Because you can have weapon um, limbs disabled in this. And weapons. If your weapon takes enough damage, you can't use it. But if one of your arms goes down, you can't use these two-handed weapons anymore. Um, so having a backup pistol is, uh, you know, actually a legit sort of strategy. Um, all right, so we've just got a ba bunch of basic boys. That's fine. We could give them grenades as well. Uh, well, they've already got grenades, actually, so that's fine. Look at this dude. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this new gun. I mean, I'll take... I really, really enjoy their armor. It reminds me of the Doom Marine. Doom guy, whatever you call him. There we go. Let's give you... You can have those, fill up your ready slots, have some ammo. And there we go, everyone's bloody ready to go. We're not getting any warnings. All items on the battlefield will be automatically recovered after mission success. Oh, shit, you love to hear that. Look at that thing. I don't think I've ever seen that thing before. Like most games, I'm pretty good at the beginning and familiar with the beginning, but not much beyond that beginning to mid game. Um... They've, they've been mess messing around with the sort of passive missions that aren't necessarily story missions there's been a lot of iteration over the year that it's been out i'll give them that much um and they're at a point now where you go in and you scavenge and you have to pick up with uh like you have to loot crates with the inventory screen geez that was a lot quicker than what i'm used to that's good hmm probably the best version of their build yet that's very exciting um Encumbrance, yeah, that plays into carrying stuff. Anyway, I, I've found the way the looting inventory system so confusing that I will constantly leave boxes half empty, you know, because I can't figure it out properly. So, look, it's got its issues for, for, for UI. Oh, okay, we've got a smooth turn, not a chunk turn. Okay. okay. Anyway, it's. I think it's always this same base or this base preset is pretty much set for the new Jericho maps. So you can go in through these windows. There's a courtyard around here. You got to sort of watch out for up on this roof as well. But these these point blank areas can be real kill zones. You got to be really careful fighting fighting dudes in that close. Uh, I think my action's on. I'm going to get the sniper around the front. Right. It does. This feels snappier. This this build. I love it. This is good. All right, anyway, so there's our um, heavy dude. Geez, all the UI's different as well. Oh, this is lovely. Okay. Your, your heavy dude has a jump pack. It's very, I, I'm not quite sure what the rationale is, but it doesn't matter. He's got this close-range rocket cannon, and yet he can bloody uh, do this scouting mobility. It's very strange. Anyway, so I like to put him up here. At the very least, you can jump down next to people and punch them in the head and kill them. <laughs> I find that pretty effective. Oh, I haven't seen him spawn up on the roof before. That's new. Let's get some cover. Oh, shit. There's two of them. All right. Caitlin's got her work cut out for her. Sean Atlas McGee. I'm not sure. I like how their names pop up when you, when you get them. I think this is also a new feature. Hmm. Okay. Let's start getting in there. Oh, that's right. They open the door automatically. Okay. They can't stop me. I'm the gingerbread man. Oh, bugger. I can't... Uh... I was hoping to get some Overwatch going there. I'll just do a really piss-weak Overwatch through here. See what we can do. I don't know. We'll see. 
And he'll have to end because we're out of moves. And you too. Uh, hopefully we don't have some bloke come thunder through here. Madman. He really is. What are you doing, mate? It's probably not how you should fight a heavy. Tip armor. Okay, yeah, yeah. So even with her armor, she's still taking a lot of health damage. They're actually messing her up pretty bad. Oh, they're called madmen. Right, I see. That's not ideal. Not ideal at all. The bash attack's not really going to do it. Have to focus. How is that not a kill shot? What have they done to this cannon? This cannon used to just obliterate people at point blank, but this doesn't seem to be doing the job. Oh, oh it's triple shot now? Oh, this is crazy. Wow, this chick might die. Can we use a med kit with the last action? Inventory. Hang on, I've got it in my... Costs four points? Oh no, she's gonna die. That's fucking not ideal. Um, can you run away? Moving. Just jump off the building in, if in doubt. Try not to bleed out. Alright, and these guys are upstairs, are they? Hmm, this is good. You know, like, I, I got into a rhythm, I, I won't lie. Um, with, uh, with dealing with this AI. Moving in. Seems they've changed it out. I can tell you what, grenade, grenade go great guns here. And the best bit is that the, the, the terrain is destructible as well. So now this guy's right down in the fucking mess with us. I've got this. Now you can sort of try and get the best. Oh, I saw a kill opportunity. There's there's potential kill damage in here somewhere. There we go. Panic. Oh, they're starting to panic. Very good. I wonder how many more there are. Dad. Dad's that guy's nickname. Okay. Oh, bugger. Bit exposed. just do recover will oh fuck i got thrown off because of the plus signs on it oh no how much does a med kit cost two jeez this has been a bit of a calamity of errors hasn't it we're gonna just try and run to this dude having said that he can probably just med himself on the next turn oh my goodness sorry team I will admit I'm a bit rusty, and uh, the UI is all a bit different, to be perfectly honest as well. 
I mean, I guess we can just do a standing fight. He might have returned, yeah. So they can have a return fire skill. Fuck it, let's just... Just keep mowing him down. Get out of here, you scrub. Here I am. Let's do this. Tango spotted. That's right, he's panicking. Don't worry about it. Sprinting. Wow, this guy got pretty messed up as well. No. Oh, he bled out. Well, that's one way to finish a mission. Yeah, so you've got a willpower as well. It's sort of like a mana bar, and it, uh, it gets used up for special abilities. Things like using the jump jet drains their willpower. And so what I did with my heavy dude is I kind of accidentally took a... like It's sort of like a rest and recover round that you always have. I forgot about it because I don't use it very often. Um, so I accidentally spent the turn recovering willpower instead of switching to the med kit. I had always assumed the feat. Okay. That is why I so did not we now have to play sort of diplomacy with the different factions. They give us missions, and it's like it's sabotage, and they, like, they all want to kill each other. They're a pack of spazzers, man. And it just, I don't love the, this diplomacy interaction. The thing is, though, I've found that I can just be nice to them and help them without actually sabotaging the opposition, and I can still level up. So, I don't know what's going on there. It's all very interesting. All right, there we go. We can reverse engineer the guns that we pick up too. How are we doing for resources? Yeah, I wouldn't mind the scarab, but we can't trade. We have to just go with what we've got. Now, my dude's actually got really hurt really badly. Um, so what I might do is we'll just go to the base and we'll, we'll actually pass time. You can see that's them. So they've got a vehicle there. We could potentially try and attack them and steal their car. All right, we've completed the research. So now we can see the mist. And this slowly spreads out. And essentially anything in that territory has a much higher likelihood of uh, being attacked. Um, recruitment protocols. Reverse engineering. New Jericho. And we should definitely get the recruitment going. You can re we can recruit these days. They've added so you can recruit directly into Phoenix. Normally, you just have to recruit from the Havens themselves. Are wow, they taking a long time to heal? Any chance that I can afford another med bay? Manufacture? No, no, no. I want to. Even though the training facility is under construction. Requires more tech blue. Okay. All right, we can start recruiting. I don't know if they have recruits available. No, it doesn't. I think they'd actually have a little man symbol if they did. All right, what other research can we do? Trade protocols? Absolutely, we need them too. Like right now, we would love to trade for some blue. So my scan's completed. Now, it used to be that oh no it's not completed it's finding stuff that it just it discovered stuff so i think it will go all the way out that's our flight range but the scanner i think is about the same and you used to be able to just scan from any of these spots but i think now you have to find another phoenix base and you scan from them so they've kind of s simplified the system you could say streamlined i guess all right trade protocols what do we got next I'll reverse engineer that rifle, sure. So we go personnel, and we've now got a recruit tab, and we can get some in three days. All right, so this guy's still hurting a bit, but I think we're ready to step off. Um, you can see they've got some trade available, and that's saying that they'll trade materials and food, but I don't think they're offering tech, which is what we want. Yeah, you can trade tech for these things, so that doesn't help us a huge amount. So anyway, let's go explore here.
Oh, whoops, I forgot to press the explore button. Jesus, what an idiot. Alright, Slime Town. Operatives discover a warehouse full of useful resources. However, the warehouse along with the town it stands in is covered in a slimy, slippery, algae-like growth that makes doing anything here tedious and exhausting. So it reminds me of that Annihilation movie. There's some weird sci-fi stuff going on that we don't fully get yet. Um, get the resources anyway. Just get whatever is easy to transport. No, no, persevere, boys. It's hard work, and when it's over, everyone's going to need a good shower, but the effort is worth it. Beautiful. Lots of materials and food. Still no tech, but we lost stamina. Now, you can see under here, well, he's the only one with the health bar because everyone else has full health. The blue is health, but the white is stamina. So every time they do a mission, you lose, I think, like 20% stamina or something like that. So it, it, uh, over time, that reduces, and that affects your... I don't know if it actually affects your ability to do anything other than when it hits zero, you guys just aren't allowed to do missions and you have to send them back to base to rest at that point. So it's a mechanic to make sure you come back to base for R&R. &R. But yeah, I don't think you actually get a stat D buff. Stamina 39 out of 40. I don't think this is, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I think the way that it would work is when the stamina hits zero, you got to go home. Okay, let's continue. We could probably go out here because we're in the neighborhood, you know. Okay, so we found another new Jericho Haven. So we can have a look. Oh, there you go. Look, they're selling tech. That's perfect. Look how much materials we have. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, let's see. What do we want? I, I really want to get a, like a vehicle or something going. A manticore? I mean, again, you've got to be able to fill it with personnel. That's the other thing as well. A, a new manticore would be really cool. But at the moment, I can barely fill the current one. Capacity six? Oh, what is it that I'm driving then? Because the one I'm driving doesn't have a six capacity, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, five had a six. Oh, that's where I'm getting confused. It does have a six, but you can deploy eight. So there must be other ships later on or something, or upgrades that allow you to put eight people in. Um, I think I think that's how I, I was reading it when we were going into the mission. Could be wrong. Anyway, PX Scarab. I wouldn't mind that. So let's uh, trade. Oh, this is a handy screen. All right. And then we'll go manufacture a scarab. Put that in the queue. Now, I mean, at the moment, we've got that under construction. We can only queue one thing. Oh, can we only queue one thing at a time? Jeez, I can't even remember. I think I troubleshot this and figured it out. But uh, the medical bay would have been helpful. Ah! Uh, what we need is more soldiers. I might just save my stuff to to recruit more dudes. Because then, you know, as opposed to having a bigger medical bay, we won't have a lot of the scenario like what we just had then where I had to sit and wait. We'll actually just be able to drop dudes off that need healing. And then it doesn't really matter that much what the rate is as long as they are, in fact, healing and, and getting XP. That's why we're building the training facility. Anyway, off to a good start. Like I said, this is running infinitely better than it has in previous times. The very early build was very rough, had a lot of issues. Um, but over the time, not only have they updated it and, and obviously cleaned it up, but they've added a lot of cool uh, quality of life changes. And they have changed a lot of the gameplay loop and how it works. You know, the scanning, the looting, there's uh, the recruiting. There's a whole lot of systems that aren't even DLC related that have changed. So... I mean, it's probably worth considering that. I assume that they're going to keep doing that at least for the next year because they've got that Festering Skies coming and I believe that's the biggest DLC as well. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of this, to be honest, and I'm an even bigger fan after playing it today. I really like it. I, I'm a big XCOM fan as well. So, look, this isn't going to convert you if you don't like XCOM-style games. This isn't going to change anything. But if you are, like, even mildly interested in any of them, absolutely do check this out. You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you did not. Anyway, team, 
Uh, let me know if you didn't know about this somehow, because I do cover it on the channel uh, intermittently. Uh, let me know if you would like to see some more, because I'd be happy to keep chipping away at this on the channel and put up some more episodes. Otherwise, we might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.